I stack silver due to my inherent mistrust of fiat currencies. Fiat simply means by government decree, that is, the government has decreed that these notes represent value and should be the primary means of transaction throughout the economy. Most governments delegate responsibility of maintaining the supply of currency to central banks, who are supposed to print new money if there is a shortage, i.e. deflation, or remove money from circulation by increasing interest rates if there is an excess, i.e. inflation. In theory, the amount of fiat currency in circulation should match the need for that money in the economy, providing just enough liquidity to allow the populace, businesses and governments to transact, that is, maintain the economic current. In other words, and in a very basic sense, in a brand new economy, the total value of all the goods, services and infrastructure is equal to all the fiat currency in circulation. All of the world's fiat currencies are unbound to physical assets. They used to be pegged to gold through the US dollar, and so the amount of fiat currency was, in a sense, finite and controlled. But through what is, in my opinion, tantamount to fraud, successive actions by world governments, particularly the US government, have steadily depegged the world's currencies from gold. The result is that all currencies only have value because governments insist they do, by fiat. Some consider gold and silver to be relics, and that there is no need for them in the world economy. But let me explain, in very simplified terms, what can and does happen when currencies that have no intrinsic value are abused by the very governments and the central banks that issue them. The note in front of you is a Venezuelan two Bolivar Fuertes, or strong, note. As recently as March 2016, this note was valued at 35 US cents. However, the official exchange rate as of August 2018 was $0.000004, an inflation rate of almost 1 million percent. In order to understand how a currency can devalue so drastically, so quickly, let us run through a thought experiment. Let's pretend we are the newly elected government of a beautiful, lush, tropical, fledgling nation, as yet unnamed, and that this two ball of our note represents the entire currency supply, and so represents the entire worth of our economy. Our population are hard-working and industrious people and simply want to get by. As luck would have it, our nation is blessed with abundant natural resources. But there is a problem. Our infrastructure is very poor, and in the process of our election, we have promised people that we will invest in improvements to the country's infrastructure. But our economy is at full capacity, and we do not have the spare currency to pay for the materials and labour to achieve our aim. Trying to fund the programme by skimming off the top of the circulating currency supply, i.e. taxation, will not go down well with our people, and would only lead to a reduction in the flow of goods and services, impoverishing the lowliest of souls. So how else can we fund these projects? Well, we could sell our natural resources on the international markets and use that money to buy the materials in. That would work, except that the prices of our natural commodity have just tanked by 75%. And instead of providing an income source, we are now losing money extracting, processing and selling at the current market prices. We have expensive social programmes to fund that were set up during times of higher prices, as well as our infrastructure promises. We have promised the people something we can no longer afford. Our economy is running a severe deficit, and as a government, we are losing both national and international credibility. But hold on. We control our own currency supply. Why don't we just print a little bit more money? Genius. After printing enough to fund our projects for a while, our entire currency supply is now five bolivars. For a short while, this works, as the people will accept payment in bolivars as usual. Except, we have created a big problem. Our economy used to represent two bolivars, or two bolivars represented our entire economy. That meant that if you were able to accrue one whole bolivar, you would be able to buy one half of all of the goods and services in our country. But now, that one bolivar you worked so hard to accrue only buys you one-fifth of the goods and services in our country. In other words, you are now poorer. And what about those who only own a fraction of the currency, say, 
those who had one thousandth of a bolivar. The money they had broken their bodies in the fields all day long for years to accrue now only buys 40% of what it used to. This month's trip for groceries will be far more challenging. They will certainly go hungry. And what about everything else? Clothing? Transport? Utilities? Maybe even the rent? All of a sudden, the savings of the poor have been destroyed. And it's all our fault.